Janetta, like so many of us, you've gone through many struggles, but the one thing you didn't do is give up. I couldn't agree more with the Mark Twain quote you shared, the secret in getting ahead is getting started. And as we say here at WGU, it's never too late. Congratulations. And Hannah, you are a force to be reckoned with. All 411 of you, right? <laughs> we, we actually have different ends of the spectrum problems here, yeah. <laughs> and in true Night Owl fashion, you continue to break down barriers, and no matter the circumstances, you keep achieving the most difficult of goals. Congratulations to you. Now, I'm pleased and super excited to introduce our commencement speaker, Spencer Pacinger, a Super Bowl champion linebacker turned television writer and producer. Spencer brought his own poignant story of living in South Central LA and playing football at Beverly Hills High to the hit series, All American. Spencer developed the award-winning show about being an outsider in two worlds, and he serves as the show's producer. Spencer grew up amid drugs, gangs, violence, and poverty in South Central LA with education-focused parents and a dream of going to college. He was offered the opportunity to attend the elite Beverly Hills High, going on to lead the football team as captain to an undefeated season. A scholarship to the University of Oregon followed, where Spencer also became team captain and was part of the team's first undefeated season. Graduating with a bachelor's degree in economics, he began his NFL career with the New York Giants, winning Super Bowl 46 in his rookie season. Spencer played seven seasons in the NFL, retiring in 2017 to pursue his dream of developing television and film projects focused on the black experience in America. Now a sought after writer and producer, Spencer has written and developed various concepts under his Moore Street Productions banner with Uninterrupted and Deviance Media. He is currently writing a film for Ron Howard and Brian Grazer's Imagine Entertainment. Spencer serves on the board of KIPP Public Schools Black and Latino Leadership Committee with the goal of creating programs for KIPP's South Central youth. He also serves on the board of Lyft's CityWorks Council. Spencer is also a co-owner of Hilltop Cafe, Coffee and Kitchen, a fast casual eatery with allegiance to underserved communities. Please welcome today, Spencer Pacinger. Thank you, Manny. I'm very nervous right now. This is my first commencement speech, so bear with me. <laughs> first off, I want to thank Sarah Van Winkle, Scott Baker, and the entire WGU staff for bringing me here today. Congratulations to all the graduates who have reached this milestone, and to the family and friends who have supported the graduates. I commend you. My name is Spencer Pacinger. I'm an ex-NFL athlete turned TV and film producer. In 2018, after playing seven years in the NFL, I chose to retire to produce a television series loosely based on my life growing up in South Central Los Angeles while attending Beverly Hills High School. The show is titled All American, and we're in our fifth season. Thank you. <laughs> we're in our fifth season with our spinoff, All American Homecoming, entering its second season. If, you haven't, if you've watched even a second of All American, thank you. And if you haven't, hopefully something I say here today compels you to dive in. Indianapolis holds a special place in my heart. On February 5th, 2012, I capped off my rookie season with the New York Giants, who defeated the New England Patriots at Lucas Oil Stadium in Super Bowl 46. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Playing in the NFL and having a television series has brought me immense joy. But I'm not here to speak about my highlights. I want to share some of the decisions that helped shape my life, including one that occurred during the lowest point of my career. One of my favorite quotes is, use what you have to get what you want. This simple, to-the-point quote leads me in all my decision-making. Whenever I set a goal, 
I take inventory of what resources and assets I have at my disposal. I can turn anything into one big puzzle because I've always been attracted to learning how systems work. It's not enough for me to see the finished product. I'm the type that needs to look under the hood to understand how the parts equal the sum. But what happens when those parts don't always add up? I'm sure some of you walking across the stage today didn't have a clear plan of what it would take to graduate from WGU. Having to balance work, family, and social life to attain a higher education, that will never be a smooth road. To all the graduates, all of you are here today because you made a decision about your life and career. Whether you are unfulfilled with, whether you are unfulfilled with your past or simply wanting more out of your future, you decided to come to WGU because you felt there was something within reach worth attaining. It's no coincidence that, the, that WGU is home of the night owls. When I think about the late nights and early mornings, the endless mounds of homework, and the never-ending never balancing act of likely being a parent and a student, the sacrifices you all had to make weren't acts of selfishness. These were decisions made for your sons, your daughters, and your significant others because investing in yourself ultimately has a ripple effect among the people you love. Decisions like these remind me of my grandparents, Carter and Lacey Pesinger, who in the 1960s decided to send their four boys across town to Ralph Waldo Emerson Middle School in hopes for a better education. Now, why does this matter? Because in 1969, the students of Beverly Hills High School petitioned the school district for integration. The students at Beverly felt their worldview was limited due to the lack of interaction with people of different backgrounds. So the school district did a year-long assessment of Los Angeles schools and found one school with a population of black students capable of handling the transition to Beverly Hills High School. That school was Ralph Waldo Emerson Middle School. After my grandmother got wind of the proposal integration program, she lobbied for her eldest son, Carter Pacinger Jr., to be enrolled and luckily he was accepted. After a few years, my father and his three brothers were all attending Beverly Hills High. Now, if you've seen All American, this is a much different origin story than how I ended up at Beverly. But going to Beverly Hills High School broadened my scope of the world as early as 13 years old. And if not for the, com the conviction of my grandparents to want better for their kids almost 60 years ago, I would not be here talking to you today. But my grandparents, weren't the, my grandparents' decision wasn't the only deciding factor in my journey to Beverly. When it was time for me to attend Beverly, the school district I was currently in would not grant permits to any students attempting to go out of district. The intention was to force good students to stay, a local, to stay local to raise overall test scores across the district. After my mother, Autumn Pacinger, got word of this, she took action. She grabbed Beverly's permit papers, told me to get in the car, and drove to the superintendent's office. What happened next is like I've seen out of a movie. My mother double parked the car, bypassed security, and swung open the door to the superintendent's office, who just so happened to be on the phone. What came after are words I will not repeat today, <laughs> but it resulted in the superintendent signing my permit papers to attend Beverly Hills High although I'm sure he would have done anything never to see my mom again. <laughs> Both my grandparents and my mother's decision to be unwavering in pursuing better opportunities for their kids are at the core of me being here today, as this messes up. <laughs> as I'm speaking to you now, I'm thinking of the children in the crowd watching their parents, or their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their aunts walk across the stage today. Your decision to attend WGU will impact them in ways you won't fully understand for decades. But know this moment is now a part of them, and it will contribute to their confidence when they decide to take strides parents, we parents have only ever dreamed of. I'm often asked how I went from playing in the NFL to writing and producing All-American. This career pivot didn't start with a proclamation or a vision of the future. It began with a single decision to be of the best in my position. See, every athlete's dream is to make it to the big leagues. But once you get there, the next best thing is earning a starting spot. So entering my third season with the Giants in 2013, I trained harder, I studied longer, and I even tailored my diet with the sole focus on winning the starting real linebacker position. And guess what? By the end of 2013 camp, my dreams had come true. I was a star high school wide receiver who converted to safety and then linebacker in college, and five years later, I'm being named the starting world backer for the New York Giants. Fairytale fairy stuff, right? Wrong. 
The defensive coaches entrusted me with the headset, meaning I had to call the defense and make corrections based on what the offense showed. So imagine me in a chess match against guys like Tony Romo, Peyton Manning, and Cam Newton. We started the season 0-6. This resulted in sleepless nights, peaking anxiety, and the never-ending fear of being cut. Although I knew it wasn't solely on my shoulders, I took responsibility because I felt I was letting my team down. The dream I had as a kid to be a professional athlete was overshadowed by the nightmare of being a starting linebacker. I wasn't having fun anymore. Deep down, I started believing that voice in my head that questioned everything. Now, why am I telling you this? Because the only thing that brought me joy and quieted that voice in my head was going to the movies. Sitting in a theater with my water, my popcorn, and my raisinets allowed me to escape the pressures of the NFL. Eventually, we made a few trades, I gave up the headset, and we ended the season seven and nine. But through it all, I still went to the movies. And after a while, I became interested in writing my own stories. So from 2013 to 2017, if I wasn't on the field playing football, I was in a movie theater or teaching myself the craft of writing screenplays. See, sometimes the road you commit to isn't always the path you'll end up going down. I'm arguably the only professional athlete you'll ever meet that will openly admit they did not want to be a starter. But this dark moment in my life opened my eyes to a new goal worth conquering. After four years of learning my new hobby of screenwriting, a friend of mine read my work and shared it with his friend, who had a friend that worked for Warner Brothers. This led to writing a one-page document that began my pivot into All-American and what I call my first career. I think about that person I was during the most depressing parts of my life, and I smile. Often we are taught to shed old skin or do away with anything that doesn't serve us anymore, but I keep that 25-year-old kid in my heart because he had to go through all those dark moments for me to be standing here talking to you today. When I talk about using what you have to get what you want, sometimes the resources and assets you have at your disposal won't get you to your goal. But that X factor is a feeling you can't shake in your gut. It's your first thought in the morning and your last thought before bed. And as I look into the crowd today, I believe many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because it was that feeling that allowed you to start climbing, knowing you would figure it out on the way up. In closing, I have a call to action for all the graduates. After you receive your diploma, you hug your family and your friends, you go out to eat and do all the fun things that come with today. When you get a moment, when you get a moment to yourself, close your eyes and remember that person in you who decided to go after the goal achieved today. I want you to thank them because at some point, the person you were became the person you are now. And that person you were loves you for sticking with it. And as you continue through life, reaching new highs and accomplishing new goals, always remember it started with a single decision to commit. And I promise you, the person who made it is smiling as they watch it all play out. Thank you.